Hi everyone, welcome to our webinar focused on the transformative power of raw mining in the midpoint within the realms of access control and governance. My name is Tadej Rapovic and today we'll explore a process that extracts valuable business roles from the system access data in the upcoming 4.9 version of midpoint. Let's take a quick look at what lies ahead in our discussion today. So through our session, we'll explore the driving force behind role mining. We will look at how this process streamline management of user permission, and we delve into the significant advantages this process offers. We take a close look at the detailed walkthrough of the role mining process within Midpoint, exploring its step from clustering and pattern detection to refining business role candidates. We will show a live demo illustrating how role mining work in practice in two different scenarios. And finally, we explore the exciting prospect and potential advancement in role mining technology. In an idle world, each business activity would have its own designated business role that contain all necessary permission. But in reality, modeling this role is a challenge. Business processes are often underspecified, making it difficult to define required permission accurately. However, the processes are there and business activities are carried out every day. This means that the business related permission information is there. It is just hidden, buried in the heap of access control data. While top down approach is primary business driver, it requires a lot of effort and collaboration between business leaders. IT and security teams. The bottom-up bottom -up approach uh, use existing data to simplify complex permission structures. In the bottom-up approach, it all starts with user permission data. Grouping users will share similar access right. These clusters of users help us to identify role candidates, which are essentially common sets of permission. The key benefit here is that this approach can uncover hidden roles that may not be visible through manual process, especially in large organization. It also ensures that roles are based on real access patterns, making it efficient and scalable. However, the discovered roles still need to be refined and validated to align with the organization security policy. Let's start with question. What is role mining? Role mining in Midpoint is a bottom-up analysis driving technique that shifts to user permission data, second out pattern and clusters that suggest potential business role. And what are the essence of role mining? It is definitely simplification. Once business roles are identified, refined and applied, the organization adopts to a more structured role-based model. This not only enhances security by reducing access risk, but also makes identity management easier and more manageable. So as a result, role mining bridges the gap between complex permission structure and clear business focused access model by using advanced algorithms and artificial intelligence technique to shift through permissions and uncover hidden access information. On current slide, we can see image that represent user permission table. It displays a relationship between uh, users and accesses. And we can see there that pattern that can be uncovered over that uh, user in our table. So role mining in Midpoint is a flexible process that usually includes several steps. Firstly, we kick off by setting the stage, defining what we aim to achieve with role mining. This phase involves collecting access data and establish the parameter for all analysis. For example, in this step, we can uh, filter users which will be included in the role mining process. We can define desired size of the role, including the number of access rights it should contain. In this important part, send only those data that is relevant for all analysis. As we move into clustering and pattern detection, we dive into the data and analyze access pattern. Our goal is to identify similarities that allow us to group objects that act similarly together. 
This cluster serves as a hint that suggests potential business roles based on the pattern we uncovered. Once we identify this suggested role, it's time to refine them. We fine tune this suggested role by adjusting permission and other necessary de details, shaping them into well-defined business role. And finally, we seamlessly integrate our fine-tuned business role into our access management structure. This integration ensures that roles become operational. However, we believe that, uh, that this process doesn't stop here. We believe in constant refinement. So we repeat the cycle, aiming for continuous improvement. This iterative approach helps us to create more precise and efficient, efficient business role over time. Many organizations face significant governance challenges, such as over-permissioning, a lack of visibility into the access right, and role explosion, where there are too many inconsistent roles. These issues make it hard to manage permission and meet audit compliance requirements. So let's imagine management of access uh, right without role mining. Hours are spent navigating complex access data, customizing permission, and ensuring security. It leads to potential errors and delays. The job gets really tough because there are a lot at stake. We might miss things, uh, leave security holes, and have to spend a lot of time fixing mistakes. Now imagine solution using raw mining tools. They scan system, identify pattern, propose modification, smartly ally access right with the specific role. So raw mining tools can help solve this problem by automatically analyzing user permission data to create these optimized roles. The real power lies in time and resource saving. So in the next few minutes, we will demonstrate how midpoint capabilities empower organization to streamline the access management by mo moving from a complex permission-based access model to structured business role-oriented model. This transition simplifies identity governance and makes role management more intuitive and scalable. Before we start with live demonstration, it is crucial to get knowledge regarding our data structure and our mining goals. In this demo, we simulate the organization of size 1,000 users and around 200 roles. We are in the state where no business role exists. There are only application roles, and they are assigned only directly. Our system organizes access right based on specific key attributes, such as uh, job title, location, organization unit, we also have some common set of roles that is automatically assigned to, to almost 95% of users, designated for core functions like Active Directory group membership, email access, and similar. Uh, we also have some special roles that are tailored to business location-specific job responsibilities and more technical roles for higher level access. Additionally, we have requestable roles that are not automatically assigned, but are distributed based on user requests. This flexibility allows users to gain temporary or special access beyond their default permission, depending on their specific need. So, we will start with first scenario, which will aim to find common business role applicable for every employee. Let's start by logging into Midpoint and exploring our environment. There we can see we had already 1,001 user enabled and 186 roles. If you are interested in the users and choose, for example, user Abigail, we can see that user has already 30 assignments. In all accesses panel, we see that all assignment has been directly assigned to that users. This app is for all users in our environment, which bring a big complexity to our systems. Let's navigate the role analysis page, where we can see in access distribution that we currently have over 27,000 of role to user assignments. This means that uh, we need to ma manage maintain and recertify so many assignments. 
to reduce the number of assignments and uh, makes the life of reviewers and maintainer easier, we would need to introduce some business roles. At the beginning, we will utilize role mining to find a beard right role. In this demo scenario, we want to find a common role applicable for each employee. So let's call our session basic employee session and give it some brief description like designated uh, discover common roles. This role should uh, cover majority of the user in our system. So let's increase it. And it also could consist at least five axes. Let's save the setting. So our analysis process has been started. We see our new created uh, session basic employee. Let's refresh it. And now we see it's complete. So let's open the session to see what happened, what has been done. OK, so there we can see some statistical information related to our session. Our first ever session for all mining, aiming to find a common employer role in our company, is giving us a suggestion. We can see that if we decide to apply that suggestion, we have here significant reduction. For example, in the number, it is 13,000 of assignments, and which is approximately in our system around 50% of total assignment. So let's have a closer look at that suggestion. In the user permission table, uh, we see our uh, details regarding role suggestion, which is uh, marked as a green uh, square. That type table uh, display a relationship between, for example, role and users in the clusters. There we can see we had included 15 roles in our role suggestion. Let's explore which role it is. So for example, exchange calendar, active directory group membership. Also there are applied to 950 users. We can see details of that user if we need. So before the demo started, I mentioned that our system organized access right based on the key attributes, such as job title, location, department. We also have common system roles that is automatically assigned to majority of user up to 95%. For core function like Active Directory group membership, email access, and similar. So based on those information, we can say that the suggestion look good and we can proceed with uh, creating a role candidate. So after we are prompt to type uh, basic information about our uh, candidate role, let's name it uh, basic employee role. and uh, check the accesses. This look good. We don't want to change anything. We'll use all accesses as suggested. So just create candidate draw. So now we can see our candidate role has been created. It is created in a draft uh, lifecycle state mode. And if we are interested in uh, some details regarding our candidate role, we can go to the standard view. And there we can see, for example, accesses that should contain and also members. Also, in this step, of course, we can tune the role as needed for as long as needed. In other words, the wall role engineering process might be executed. However, for our demo purpose, we'll omit the role engineering process and we will skip to the next steps, which is role migration. So let's navigate back to our session. 
and open action panel candidate roles. There we can also see our uh, candidate role basic employer role in drafts uh, state. We can see that content are required uh, user members and in this roles. So now it now that role is in a uh, draft state. So we want to make from that role operational. So let's execute migration. During that process, let's recap what happened. At the beginning, we defined that our goal is uh, reducing the number of role uh, direct assignment to users by covering our core common roles, which are business structure role, problem compilates and maintains. Role mining helps us identify pattern and uh, in the user access and suggest new roles that group common permission together. Then we create a candidate role based on this suggestion. But at the point, user had booked the origin direct assignments and the new created role. So that means we haven't reduced anything yet. And this is where the migration step in. The migration task identify the duplicates and remove them. Additionally, it switched life cycle state of the basic employee role to active. So role in that state become operational and can be assigned to every new employee joining the company, providing the common or core access right. So let's refresh it. Now we can see process has been down and in immigration role, we see our basic employee role set tablet. Let's explore it in the cluster to see what happened. We can see that uh, 950 users no longer have the old 15 direct assignment. There only exists a single relationship with a, our created basic employee role. So our, our work for the build session is complete. Let's continue with the second scenario where we aim to identify potential job-related business roles. So let's navigate back at role analysis and repeat similar process like in discovering common role. So we utilize role mining. And in this case, uh, as we mentioned, uh, we had um, distributed our job-related permission based on the specific uh, attribute, like in, uh, in our environment, it is a title attribute. So for that scenario, it's best to choose attribute base mode. There we can fill some basic information. So let's say, it, uh, let's call it a job uh, session and designated discover job business roles. We want to do our analysis over all users in uh, organization. So we skip that step. And as we mentioned that we had uh, attribute title like uh, that is connected for our uh, job responsibilities. We can type it into group by attribute. So we add additional condition. Of course, if uh, any other organization has a different attribute like manager or organization, there it can be specified. Also make sure that it is included in analyze attribute. Uh, it makes easier decision making in the future. We will see it. Let's save the settings. And again, process has been executed and job session tile has been upper. So it's running. Let's refresh it. And now explore what happened here. Okay, so there is a little bit more interesting information than in uh, first scenario. So we can see there is a multiple role suggestion detected. And also if we apply them, we can get a maximum system reduction for over 70%. So it is a really good opportunity for us. Let's explore clustering result. There we can see clusters or group of objects that are similar, that is uh, targeted to the specific uh, job responsibility. For example, this one, salesperson. There we can also see membership density is a little bit uh, lower 
And uh, this is probably happened because we had in our system some request table role and it could get uh, again some user uh, unique access. So we can see it by simple cluster preview. There is a uh, display uh, by black square users to role connection. So there we see it's a noise that is probably from our request table roles. Okay, so let's explore title uh, size person cluster. We can see in our cluster or group is include 78 users. And that 78 user is from different locality like New York, Tokyo, London, but has same parent organization sales and same, same title salesperson. We had also one role suggestion in this cluster. So let's explore it in operation panel. There we can select our suggested role and we see it contain 16 roles and it, it has been applied to over all users in our cluster. So over all sales uh, person user in that group. Okay, let's say that is a really good uh, chance to reduce our system and uh, simply create a candidate role from that. Give it name sales, this role, include all suggested accesses and save. Okay, now exit wizard. And on the left hand, uh, user permission table, we had an operation panel where we can switch from pattern view to candidate role. And here we can explore our candidate role and make sure if it contain all required uh, relation. So yeah, we can see it contain all 16 roles and it's over all users in that group. Okay, let's migrate that role. This could be faster because there is not that much object for processing. Okay, it's done. And in migrate panel, we see our sales business roles has been enabled and contain all required members. Let's explore what happened now. There we can see instead all 16 uh, assignment, we had just uh, one sales business role that is applied over all users. This table is in compressed mode, so we can expand it to see all object. Okay, so our work uh, for, for second scenario is uh, at the end. Let's uh, check in all user what happened with our Abigail user after migration process. So there, there we see instead 30 assignment, just 16. And in the all accesses panel, we can make sure that has all core uh, accesses, but it is from a basic employee role. So it's no longer direct assignments. Let's navigate back to role analysis. So on the role analysis page, we can see that we have already the system uh, role to user assignments from uh, around 27,000 to uh, 12,000 assignment. So we successfully create and activated the system access and sales business role and ensuring that all direct assignment have been removed. Let's return to the presentation. So role mining in the midpoint has unlimited potential for improvements and innovation. Here we have a prepared a list of them that we believe will significantly change our capabilities. The first of them is the process automation, where we focus on reducing manual effort. We should also think about integrating risk analysis, allowing us to identify security risks and vulnerabilities over our systems. Another interesting future can be hierarchical proposal. So instead of a proposal for a candidate role, we would receive a proposal for a business structure that could best cover our system or cluster. Also, outlier analysis could be another valuable feature. Let's imagine that role analysis functionality will, in addition to suggests for business role, warn about a potential treat and, mis and misconfiguration in our system. And immediately, administrator will be able to send, for example, this misconfiguration at red certification process. 
And in the end, it's better to do things uh, safely than make trouble later. So there we are preparing a functionality that will simulate the migration process in the role mining. So in the conclusion, role mining in Midpoint is a powerful tool that can revo revolutionize access control and governance. It could help in the transition from a complex application base to a business-oriented model. And it is also a configurable process that adapts to your unique needs. If you are interested in this topic, for more information, explore our documentation at dots.evolveon.com. Thank you for your attention.